Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Linda Gallagher. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, The Distant Lighthouse, available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, pretty much wherever books are sold. But if you guys want to get everything that Linda has to offer, do yourself a favor and go directly to her personal site, authorlindagallagher.com. There, not only will you be able to find more information on Linda herself, You'll find more information on her book, The Distant Lighthouse, as well as find hyperlinks set up to take you to her Amazon page for purchasing. So one more time, that's author lindagallagher.com. And I will say, Linda was brought to our network People of Distinction today by some of the best movers in the business, Good River Print and Media Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, move it through Good River. You can find them at goodriverprintandmedia.com. And guys, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Linda here on the line because her book we're going to be discussing, The Distant Lighthouse. Guys, listen, it's, it's a tale, okay? It's really an allegory set up by Linda. But what I love so much is it's such a wonderfully creative use of expression because... The Lighthouse, and of course, Linda is going to go into so much more detail, and she's the expert, so she's going to be able to articulate everything much better than I ever could. <laughs> but the Lighthouse in this instance is a symbolic representation of ourselves, right, of humanity. And guys, I don't know about you, but I remember growing up and hearing stories of these different lighthouses throughout the world that really illuminated the night sky for ships. The lighthouse was a beacon of light. It was actually like a GPS before GPSs were created. But now, since you know the advancement of humanity and technology, it's kind of faded in a sense. They're still around, of course, but it's not utilized or depended upon as heavily as they once were. Now, it's, a, it's an amazing correlation that Linda is making when it comes to the lighthouse to humanity. And again, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm not going to steal her thunder. It's an amazing representation in which she's come up with. So I'm going to leave it for her to articulate. But it is so, the contrast is wonderfully made. And this is a book that really is going to help almost revitalize your spirit in a sense, right? It's going to help you freshen your mind, freshen your heart, and really come into a new you, a new stage, or actually reinventing yourself. Not necessarily a new you. It's a you that's always been there. But you're going to be able to push a lot of the things away that it's that has built up over time. And as I stated, listen, Linda is the expert, okay? She is going to be able to articulate everything. So without further ado, let's bring her here with us. Linda, first and foremost... Thank you so much for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. How are you? Oh, I'm, well, I'm thrilled to be here and listening to you and your sharing right now, which is so right on. I felt so inspired and uh, the spirit of Lighthouse really talking to your heart and to your listeners. So thank you so much for having me be here today. It's really a joy. Absolutely. Listen, the joy is all ours. The pleasure is all ours. We're very much looking to really learn about your book, but also receive an education in the message, in the theme underneath, because we know that there's going to be so much value brought to the table today. Now, Linda, before we go into the book, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself, please. I'm happy to do that. It's that. That's a good part of what I like to do and being with others. And that is to say, at this point in my life, for the last 30 years, I have been the director of a non-denominational spiritual center in Northern California. And this whole journey of being in, it's really music ministry. 
I'm a musician and a recording artist and have been uh, so uplifted by the power of music and the power of healing, which my healing began at 30 years of age through Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. So as a result of the experiences that I have been given in this lifetime, uh, this Lighthouse book is really a reflection uh, of that experience in a way that may have a deep, deep ability to open one's heart to the idea of what am I, why am I here, and really what is my life purpose. So what I am doing currently, and as I said, for 45 years, I have been on this journey of learning and deepening this spiritual connection. Uh, people ask me here at the center, are you a specific religion? We are the religion of love and service. Mm -hmm. We are here open to the teachings, whether they came through Christ Jesus, through the, the Hindu Advaita, through Buddhism. It's all this underlying journey of walking from the heart uh, that is selfless love and service. So that's one of the gifts that my own life has unfolded is that understanding that the heart is where all the, all the juice is. It's all coming from the heart. And um, so I'm very excited about uh, lighthouse because it really is the my own journey and uh should i tell you more about that yes uh, Benji, please how it unfolded yes absolutely so um when i was 39 years of age i was married to a amazing amazing soul we were very connected fell in love we met in alcoholics anonymous and together we were able to, my husband was a amazing musician and uh, just a songwriter. And the two of us leapt out together. And so much of the music we did was always positive, was spiritually oriented. And we were signed by Columbia's artists of New York City, about to go on a nationwide tour. tour. So that, of course, was a big deal. Of course. And... Um, we had been on many uh, uh, cruise ships doing music in so many different venues all over California and in Hawaii and um, in various places in the U.S. And so we were about to go on this journey and uh, we thought Dave had the flu and he was dead eight days later of acute leukemia. So at that point in time, we were living by the seat of our faith. I ended up living in a little room for three and a half years, and um, I didn't play any instruments. I was not a solo person, and um, the spirit, through this experience, my heart was broken open, where I had to go deeper in my spiritual journey and allow God to enter in fully, which it did. And so in that three and a half years in uh, living in this little room, one morning, I would always go to Sausalito. I lived in Sausalito and I would go to this little restaurant in the morning and one morning in deep sorrow and just lost in a, in a very deep way. The sorrow was huge. Is this story was laid on my heart. The spirit speaks to me in various ways. The music that I've written, I've, I've framed 12 different albums. They've gone all over the world. And I don't sit down and write music. All of a sudden, music starts talking in my heart, as does this book and some of the other books that are in file folders. All of a sudden, I will, uh, I'm being told something and I grab, <clears throat> excuse me, pencil and paper and I start writing. And this story of the lighthouse was a light for me. It helped me to begin to understand in this allegorical way of what had happened, how I got so lost, and now by remembering something that had been placed on my heart many, many years before, 
that as I remembered that, the light began to come in again, and I began to walk forward. So the whole book is about um, forgetting. And when we forget, we suffer. And when we begin to remember, it's like when we lose our keys. I mean, we suffer. Well, you know, where did I put my keys? And we're trying to figure it out and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden we let go and bam, it happens. Ah, oh, yes. And, the, and then the dark is lifted and the light comes back in and we get going in our car and we go forward. So it's a joy to be able to, in fact, I've made T-shirts for the lighthouse and coffee cups and and people, we've sold many, many of these books just out of our center for one place besides on Amazon and other things. And it's like, it's a very helpful um, reminder. If you're into truth reminding, one of the things I would say, you know, you can offer something to somebody. You could pass, attempt to pass something forward to somebody. But if they're not quite ready for that, if they're not hungry enough, if they don't have the eyes to see or the ears to hear, it won't click. But if it, if that is a place within your own life, then something with this story could be very helpful to move you off of that old idea into something that will pull you forward and you'll remember, oh God, thank God, I'm here again, maybe at a higher level. I'm just looking in the book right now. One of the one-liners is dirty windows, because in the book, it's talking about the windows that are surrounding the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And within the lighthouse is its light. Dirty windows dim the full presence of your magnificent light. And it talks about the fact that as time goes on, we begin to take on, and this is stated in the story, you begin to take on everything that's outside in the external that acts as a covering in your, over the window. And in that, your sense of your light begins to dim. It says, pay attention and remember to keep your windows clean. So it's like every day when we awaken, it's like, you know, we're laying in the bed and all kinds of insane, it's, I call it the think -thon. It's all going on in there. And it's like, do I have a rope to grab a hold of that will bring me back into my center, into that place that is higher than this uh, monkey mind that is going on all the time? The monkey is jumping from tree to tree to tree. Well, our work as beings is to get centered and grounded and that's in the story lighthouse in remembering and practicing because in the book the light keeper tells lighthouse you must practice this you must practice this so in order that that shading of the world the junk of the world won't get on your window i'm i'm sitting here and i'm looking out my window and my windows need to be cleaned from the winter <laughs> and the rain and the stuff, you know? And it's like, I would have a much clearer view of those beautiful redwood trees that are outside if my window was clean. Absolutely. It's like, I can see clearly now that song. I can mm -hmm. see clearly now the rain is gone. You know, I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that have kept me down. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. <laughs> beautiful what uh, guys listen you know what you got to do here on the line with linda gallagher we're discussing her fantastic book the distant lighthouse available at amazon barnes and noble or directly through her personal site author linda gallagher.com now linda as we continue on with this this interview i'd love to know i'm curious what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, you know, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't expecting prior to embarking upon the journey? Well, I know one thing. I have it written down in front of me that I feel is really uh, a key that uh, took place all those years ago when I was in my little room. Mm -hmm. 
is I read a book called A Man Called Peter. And his wife wrote the book, Catherine Marshall. The man's name was Peter Marshall. He was a Presbyterian minister. He was just dynamic and he died suddenly. And I was led to reading this book and because at 39 years of age and how everything has happened and taken place, I mean, it's a huge story in and of itself, but it was like, there's no book that can really tell what it was. You know, I went searching for these grief books and all of the kind of things to help me walk through the situation I was in. And I thought to myself, you know, someday I need to write a book that's going to help somebody like me walk through this time. Absolutely. So that's kind of like you asked me the question, what inspired you to, to write this book? Well, you know, th- just what I shared with you, a man called Peter, it was a, it was a good little book, but it wasn't quite there. <laughs> there you go. There you have it. You know, and then last question, as we start to tie up this fantastic interview, Linda, being an artist myself, I love having this platform to really be able to pay it forward to other artists in a sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, you, as you yeah. said, you're, listen, primarily a musician. And you wrote this book, and it was definitely something that helped you through your own time of need and something that you wanted to put out for the public to be able to benefit from mm-hmm. as well. Now, you've been through the process yeah. of, A, constructing yeah. the book, finding a publisher, getting it out there. For any yeah. new writers listening in right now, Linda, what advice would you be able to give them? I would say listen to your heart. Don't write from your head. Same thing with any sort of art, the music, you know, it's like, is it calling? Is it really a calling that you can't, even though through your ego, you might say, no, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I really felt, you know, for a long time, you need to write about this because I write all the time. Being in spiritual ministry, I've got file folders and cabinets filled with all the writings, but it's like, writing and putting this forward is like, I don't know how to write a book, but spirit does. And the way it unfolded, it's like when you're propelled out of your deeper nature, eventually you'll have to let go and say yes. So don't I, this is what I feel deeply having been in this work for a long, long time. And especially working with thousands of people over these many, many years. Mm-hmm. And I'm not exaggerating is that, when you're trying to do your life from your think it's on, it's not the life that you're looking for. The life that you're looking for is right where you sit, but you have to go deeper. So for me, it's been a journey of 45 years of turning within meditation, studying, writing, contemplating, concentrating, get focused on your heart's desire. What is it telling you? And oftentimes it's not what you think it's on. Most of the time, it's not what you think it's on is going to say is going to bring you the fulfillment and the life you're meant to be living. There you have Just it. to add one thing about this in the lighthouse, what is so beautiful about this unfolding? Two things. When I was in my little room and I was in that t- total lostness and despondency and really just uh, knocked out. I called somebody and it was a dear, dear, my, I would say my AA brother. He lived up the coast. I called him on the phone and I was like this little tiny voice going, Don, this is Linda. I can't remember who I am. And there he was. I call him my life keeper. Because he said, okay. And he started, he started helping me to remember who I really am. And so he just passed a few months ago. And I would go up to Mendocino many, many times over the years, actually Fort Bragg up the coast. And when I got the book published, the first, so I published two forms of the book. Mm -hmm. He said, could you read it to me? So he's like 15 years older than me. So he's, well, he just passed. So he was 90. 
And I, he was so, it took us over an hour to read the book and look at the pictures. And he was so thrilled. He said, I haven't had somebody read a story to me since I was a kid. This was the best moment you could have brought me. Wow. That's one of the things about the book is that anybody, any age, if there's an opening, they will love this. Mm-hmm. It'll speak to them because there's a hero in the story. And the hero is right inside of us. We're the hero. It's this amazing presence that is just waiting to express and expand. But am I ready? You know, am I ready? That's the question. You know, I've worked with, as I said, many, many addicts over the years. And that's always the question. Are you ready to be free? Are you ready to be free from the bondage of self? And allow yourself to know the joy of living, true joy of living, which is the infallible sign of the presence of God. Are you ready for that joy? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, then are you ready to do the work? Because, you know, everything worth having in life, bring it calls for energy, it calls for concentration, it calls for dedication, calls for commitment. And in this lighthouse story... When Lighthouse remembered, and the story, I don't want to give the whole thing, because then I don't know if you'll get the book, but you want to get the book. (laughs) The pictures, the artwork, and the one-liners, there'll be a one-liner. The story goes, and then you get the one-liner, and it sticks itself in there. But at the end, you see Lighthouse. Oh, my God. The, The expression, expansion of the energy, the light, because lighthouse remembers knowing that it's in its perfect place doing the thing that it was called to do it has been chosen to expand its light into the dark this is in the book um there's a poem that i thought it was a song and then when i was finishing the book i was prompted and i heard you need to put this at the end of the book because one of the recognitions in, ninth, in uh, 2014, I was rushed to emergency operation for a brain tumor that was the size of a large lemon. Wow. And I had been having symptoms for many years, and I thought it was hypoglycemia because when I was diagnosed after I got sober, they told me acute hypoglycemia. So I figured all these symptoms, you know, I was having aphasia, which is a form of seizure and blah, 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 headaches, like not to be believed. Anyway, so by the grace of all of this, and I do feel like I'm the lighthouse. I have to tell you that, honestly. (laughs) I feel that the light has entered into my awareness in such a way that when I was put on the table, I was told, you have a very large tumor on your brain. And it has to be removed immediately. So this was a rush down the down the peninsula to Redwood City where they do all the work. And um, I could feel, I could experience a fearlessness and a love beyond anything I had ever known in my life that I knew it didn't matter if I went through the tube all the way and didn't come back or if I did come back and it wasn't quite, it was a little distorted, I knew that this light that is indwelling would use it for its purpose. So a month after I had this operation, I walked into the uh, neurosurgeon's office because she had to look at the whole left side of my head right now, and they put plates and screws. I've been screwed on. (laughs) I've been screwed back on. And the first thing she said was, you've been saved. He has more for you to do. He even used my hands. Seven-hour operation. I was out of the hospital in two days, sitting at the keyboard. I couldn't play my guitar anymore for four years because of all the pain in my arm. I picked my guitar up. There was absolutely no pain. I was totally healed. So... My, my story 
is really about the glory of this light. You could call it God, you could call it Christ, whatever you call it, mm -hmm. but it's real. And it's simply waiting for us to clean our heart so that it can do its work in and through us because it really is all about this light. The world is suffering because it's turned away from the way to walk. It's forgotten. So this book for me, I feel is another way to put it out in the world. It's kind of like a little song that I sing. It's, it goes, it only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around will warm up in its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. So I think that's what we've done this morning, Benji. Absolutely. Listen, I agree. I agree, Linda. Guys, listen, you know I usually like to end the interview on my own little reflection. I, I don't even feel right doing that. I mean, everything that Linda has just stated was so perfectly articulated. And it perfectly encapsulated the book in which she's written. Guys, listen, we all have our own little lighthouse within us that just needs mm. to be like her window, right? Just so, needs to be cleaned. So it'll illuminate yeah. the path for us. That is such yeah. a – listen, head on over to Amazon. Head on over to Barnes & Noble. Author Linda Gallagher dot com. Pick up your copy of The Distant Lighthouse by Linda Gallagher. You surely will not be disappointed. If this interview hasn't moved you, pinch yourself. All right. There's something wrong. I don't know what's going on. This is a book that needs to be on everybody's shelf. You know what you have to do. Linda, this has been such an honor. Thank you very much again for being a guest with us on People of Distinction. Oh, thank you. Bless you.